I don't think there's a creature alive that doesn't need healing. Or some more than others, some specifically, in you know, whatever affliction of the moment. I think we all need healing to some degree, although some are sick today. And some are sick of the heart. I think two, two or three days ago, one of the staff people was cleaning out an area, kind of one of the last bastions of storage which has been transistorized, and there was a, there was a picture amongst all the different things in that room. There was a picture of a young man who I'm still, I still kind of consider myself to be his surrogate mother, even though he's not here anymore. He's still around somewhere. He's not here. And his then very beautiful wife. And I remember looking down at the picture when the image is still in my mind. Sometimes we need healing and we don't even know it. Sometimes we we're in denial of what we really need. So there's, there's different levels of things. There's, there's the people who need, you know, they've got a sore, they got pain somewhere, and then there's people who they don't even know that they're, they're hurting inside, like this individual. <clears throat> and I always think of his mom and his dad, who have, I, God only knows how many tears and how much fretting and worrying over their son. And I think about, you know, there's just it's a rainbow of things. So I was thinking, what can I open up to share with you that kind of speaks to all these things? And there's one psalm that speaks to all these different needs, and that's Psalm 103. And I just want to read. I don't think I'm going to do anything more than just read and share a thought with you, because I think sometimes the things speak for themselves. Bless the Lord, O my soul, all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Think about that. Just right there, all the things that are mentioned that the Lord is to us. Whatever your need is today, and I'm not saying, you know, we simply go to God because we're needy. But whatever your need is, I pray you find somewhere in this psalm the fact that it's He who can heal all of the afflictions, all of the diseases, all of the heartaches, all of anything that aileth us right here. He made known His ways unto Moses, His acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful, gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. Thank God. For as the heaven is as high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he hath removed our transgressions from us. Think about that. If you're sick in your heart today over the things that you think you've done, or the failures, or the pain that comes from the knowledge of failure. Think about that. As far as the east is from the west, he hath removed our transgressions from us. You don't have to carry it around. He bore it all. These are all the things I think about. When I, I look out at the folks in the church, I think about the people I cannot see that I know are listening, those people who are the staple king's houses who write and sometimes send me pictures. But I think about the people sitting in front of me and I think about the fact that every single person comes into the sanctuary, even though we come in prayed up and full of faith, everybody has a need. For some people's provision, I was just reading about one of our king's houses in, towards the north of the state who's just learned that their funds from the government are cut off. And in fact, the last three or four weeks that they've been receiving benefits, they've been asked to reimburse. You know, and then your moment of, what am I going to do now? Just like I tried to say, everything's contained in here. I want you to think about those moments when you know the Lord will take care of you. 
you know, the passage that says, I've never seen the righteous begging bread or forsaken. Think about these things. God is faithful. If you need healing today of any kind, God is faithful. You, you go and you keep going to the table of the Lord. You pray and you keep asking. You petition. You keep knocking on the door. Don't think that God has forgotten you. It says here, for he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. He knows what we're about. He knows what you're about. He knows where you're at. He expects you to talk to him and tell him, but he knows all about it. That's why I said I have no, I have no patience for people who talk about, you know, they condemn you, or you're sick for a reason, or all this bad stuff happens because you have unconfessed sin in your life, or, you know, you're one of these people. What are you, my judge? Are you my secret police person that's going to follow me around? So I said, I pity, the, you know, I pity the people who let themselves be berated by other Christians, but I have no sympathy on the other hand if you haven't wrapped your mind around the fact that the only one you should be concerned with is Jesus Christ. What he thinks of you and your relationship with him, that's preeminent. Everything else, anything that anybody says about you, your walk, your church, your, even your family, Okay, them's fighting words there, but even that. You put him first. He'll take care of you. Don't think he's a genie in a bottle and he's just going to materialize at the moment that you need him, but he'll be there. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him and his righteousness unto the children's children. Now, you know, think about all of this and think about the fact that in this psalm, everything... Everything that you could think of in terms of need, need is, is right here. Now, you know the names of God. You know how sometimes in a moment of need you forget, or what should I pray? What, you know, I've had that happen sometimes, and my mind goes blank. You know, the person who's in the book all the time, and I think specifically, I've got this thing I'm going to pray about, but then my mind might just go blank in a moment, you know, taken over with all of the concerns, and I'll, just, I'll actually just sit, and I always have the one psalm I always go back to. It's the one psalm that it's like the reset button in my mind. The Lord is my shepherd. He's leading me. The Lord is my shepherd. He's going to lead me to a place to lie down, a place of rest, a place of, of quietness of the soul, of provision of the things that I need. I, that's my reset button. If everything goes blank, I reset Psalm 23. There I am. And I find at least there I, I have some footing now to get back to where I need to go in, in the Word. Find that place for yourself. Some people have a verse of scripture they always go back to. But maybe today you're not sure what exactly you need. And I say everybody needs healing. Everybody needs to have the touch of the Lord. You know, I've read messages from some of you, people's marriages and family disasters going on. And all I can say to you is, you know, stay the course to find the place where you hang on, you don't let go. The Lord will be faithful to see you through. If you're sick today, the Lord will heal you. If you're sick in spirit, the Lord can raise you up. If you have needs, you keep going and asking Him, trusting Him for the provision that He'll make a way for you. When everything is gone, I believe it's, this is a universal principle, when everything is gone, when health is broken, when spirit is broken, when funds are gone, when people are forsaken, when everything is gone, you get to the precipice right there of looking over the edge and then God will come on the scene. I don't know why he has to wait that long, but maybe it's, it's for your benefit and mine. He wants to know that when we said we really trust him, we really do.